Hi, kids. We're reaching out to you today um, to connect so that we can continue to learn more and more about Jesus. A lot of things are being done today, but not everything um, is pertaining to kids. So we want you to know that we are thinking about you, we're praying for you, and Amen. that we love you. And uh, that's D Jesus is our forerunner. He does. He is right there uh, paving the way for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to open in prayer, like just like we always do our Sunday school lesson. And uh, we'll have our lesson today, and we're going to open with prayer. And Brother Mike's with us today. So we're really glad of that, and we'll have him to open us, if he would. Okay, let us pray. Father in heaven, again, we thank you for today. I thank you for Arlene. Uh, Father, thank you for Richard and, and, and the media doing the video. And, and Father, bless our kids as they're, as they're watching now. And Father, I just pray that they truly will know what Easter means. And it does mean salvation, and salvation we win. Lord, bless, bless us now. Bless your word. We know your word never returns void. Bless, uh, bless your word. Bless this ministry today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The, uh, uh, what we're going to do today, is in, we're going to study, and we're going to study about a word in particular that pertains to Jesus and his example that he gives to us about how we should be uh, living our life. And the word is humble. Now, the meaning of the word humble, and that's not a word that we just use every day, is it, kids? The meaning of the word is not proud or boastful. And it means, uh, it actually means lowly, uh, lowly in manner. But I didn't know if you'd understand lowly because you think of something being down low. But it means just you're just not proud, that you don't think you're any better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So this is the way we're going we're gonna to study today. Um, using the scripture to te teach us about Jesus. And um, even though he was king of kings and lord of lords, we know that, don't we? Right. Uh, yes. Uh, he was God. He, he was God. But he was humble and he lived on earth. And we're going to study using this word as the foreword uh, his last week on, on earth before he was crucified. And we're just going to go down through it. And each day we're going to talk about what happened in his life and how it pertains to our life. So uh, we're going to start, and uh, we're going to use our memory verse to begin with. And it is Philippians 2, 8. And it says that being found in appearance as a man, and you know that he came to earth as a man, mm -hmm. he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And those two words, humble and obedient, go together in the servant life that he lived uh, and given his, his life on the cross as a, as a servant uh, to us, serving us by dying on the cross for our sins. So that's the way we're going to look at this as we study today. Uh, the first day, I have it up here, and these are not real plain, but I think you're going to be able to see them uh, the, that the way they are. But uh, the, the very first thing, we're going to start with Sunday, and we call it Palm Sunday. We're kind of behind, aren't we? But mm -hmm. you're used to me being that kind, that kind of shape. But... Um, it was called Palm Sunday, and I'll tell you why that was. But Jesus told, he, he was going into Jerusalem, and he was between uh, Bethany and Bethphage. And as he went along, he told two of his disciples to go, and to go into uh, the village nearby, which they identified as Bethage. And there he would find a cult. Now, all four Gospels record these things, guys, but they're, each one gives us a different thing. Uh, just like if you saw an accident and I asked four of you to tell me about it, each mm -hmm. one of you would have a different thing. That's right. And that's the way th these are, uh, each one of the Gospels. But this particular, uh, we're going into the, the book of Mark, and this tells us that uh, he sent two of his disciples into the village, and they would find a colt. Another Gospel said a, a donkey and her colt. And as they went into the uh, uh, village, sure enough, there was a a colt tied there and he said to tell them uh, if they ask you what you're doing that the master has need of it and he'll bring it back shortly that's <laughs> exactly the way it happened Amen. and I do hope I don't forget to put the pictures up there I get so carried away with this I, I, I might <laughs> praise I, God yeah we'll we'll have Mike to keep me on ta target <laughs> if I don't do it all right uh, now then after he got the, after they brought the coat back to Jesus, they took off their outer garment, their cloak. It was called a cloak, and put it on, upon the donkey. 
of the colt and then put Jesus upon the colt. And that was the way he rode into Jerusalem. Now, by this time, he had done many miracles and he had a great following and they were praising him uh, mm -hmm. as he rode in. They were looking for a king. He is king of kings and lord of lords. We know that, don't we? Mm -hmm. But they were looking for a king to lead them in an army against right. the Roman government right. uh, because the Roman government was really mean to them. And uh, they wanted out. And they were looking for that. So they were really praising Jesus. It says that uh, they had, our Bible tells us they had branches, uh, waving branches. They put branches down, and then they put their cloaks down for him to ride in like he was royalty. Mm -hmm. But watch, look, look what how he was riding in. He rode in on a donkey. Instead of a white stallion like royalty, he rode in on a donkey, which represented humility, humility being humble, and peace. So Jesus came just like he lived his life as a servant humble and as a servant and god's word and, and it had never been written before either uh -huh. what god's word said that's exactly never been written before that's exactly right now that happened on sunday uh that afternoon he did go to the temple but uh it was late our bible tells us it was late and he went into uh, back to bethany and he came back to the temple on monday morning when he got to the temple he found a horrible mess uh, there were money changers. That there were hundreds and thousands of people in Jerusalem. They mm -hmm. came for the Passover. Mm -hmm. So they came from all over the country, and some of them had uh, money that didn't match the, the uh, Jewish money, so they had to exchange it. Well, the exchangers would charge him a, a horrible fee, and so it was just bedlam. They were selling doves for sacrifice because the people couldn't bring a sacrifice, and they were, they were selling them like some of the stuff we see today where they have the prices just out of sight on things that we need. Uh, that was why they were doing the doves. They, would, they had them at a tremendous price. And it was just lots of noise, no place for worship. And Jesus turned over the, the tables of the money changers and the seats of the mm -hmm. people that were selling the doves and drove them out of the temple and cleaned it up where it was back to a place of worship. Right. And then Amen. he began to teach. He spent Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday teaching. Now, I want you to think just a minute, kids. If you knew, and he knows everything, he was God, if you knew on Sunday that you were going to die on the cross on Friday, how would you spend that week? Mm -hmm. Would you spend it teaching others just like Jesus? Look what Jesus did, a servant, an absolute servant. He spent his entire week mm -hmm. teaching others, teaching others so they could have a better life and live more for uh, a godly, live a godly life for him. So, uh, on uh, Wednesday, possibly Wednesday, I don't know. It was before Thursday, but we do know that from what our scripture tells us. Mm -hmm. But they had uh, one of his disciples, he had 12, remember. One of his disciples was named Judas Iscariot. And Judas Iscariot's heart was turned over to Satan. Satan mm -hmm. took possession of his heart. And he became uh, uh, evil thoughts. He went into, uh, uh, to, he went to the Jewish priest and uh, the Jewish officials and told them that they could, he could turn Jesus over to them, but he'd cost them a price, a 30 pieces of silver, and they agreed. So uh, that began the, the betrayal of Jesus. Now we go into Thursday, and Thursday uh, was the day of, uh, of Passover, where they did the Passover meal and celebrated the Passover. And so Jesus told two of his disciples to go into the city, and there they would find a man, and he would be carrying a pitcher. And I don't know if you can see that, and I hope you can, but he, he was carrying a pitcher. And the, re the thing that points this out to us is that was a woman's job. Men didn't carry those around. It was a woman's job to go get the water for the home and bring it back in. So he was easily picked out of the crowd. <laughs> and <laughs> that wouldn't work today, would it? But <laughs> anyway... Uh, he, he was uh, picked out of the crowd, and he got, uh, uh, he, he's, the disciples were to tell him that the master had need, or the teacher had need, of a room for to prepare the supper for his, uh, his disciples. And look, here we go. Jesus is, this is Thursday, and he was crucified on Friday. He's still still serving, still serving, mm -hmm. looking out for the needs of his disciples because this meal was so important uh, to everyone. So 
the, the man took, took the disciples to a large upper room, and there the room was already prepared for them, and they prepared the meal for the, the Last Supper. Um, now, in John uh, 13, it, 4 and 5, uh, it's got something that, that isn't in the rest of the Gospels, but as the meal, as, as Jesus took his disciples and they started their meal, Jesus got down, he, he, he took his uh, outer garment and he tied it on and he took a pan of water and he washed the disciples' feet. He got to Peter and Peter said, no, no, you're not going to wash my feet. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, I either do that or you'll have no part of me. And he said, wash all of me. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is wow. recorded. It, but look at what a servant. Mm-hmm. Look what a servant. Serving right on. Amen. What an example. What a Jesus we have, huh, kids? Now, it, it was during this, t- this meal that Jesus identified the one that was going to betray him. He said, I'm going to be betrayed. Uh, and all the disciples were looking at each other, and they were saying, is it I, is it I? And Jesus said, the one that I take the bread and, and put it in the sop and hand it to him, uh, that is the one that will betray me. And when he did that, then he told Judas, he said, go do what you have to do. Quickly go do what you have to do. And Judas got up and left at that time. Then, uh, then Jesus tried to tell them that what was ahead but they still didn't understand that he said the sheep, the shepherd will be taken and the sheep will scatter. And Peter stands at that time and says, Lord, I will never, ever leave you. I'll go to you unto death. And Jesus tells him, Peter, you will deny me three times uh, before the cock crows twice, the, crow, the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though Peter said, no, no, I wouldn't. But they, they sang a hymn and they went out into the garden of... Uh, Gethsemane, and Mr. Mike's not doing too good job, guys. He let me get behind on my pictures. Uh, <laughs> that's the washing the feet, and there's Judas leaving. When they, when they got to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Jesus had his disciples to wait and pray, and he went on into further into the Garden, and he took Peter, James, and John with him. And uh, he, he told them to watch and pray because they were going to need the strength for later on. And he went, it said, the Bible tells us he went a stone's throw from there. And he started to pray. And uh, as he prayed, he prayed, he knew what was ahead. He knew the cross was ahead. And he prayed to God, not my will, but yours. Mm-hmm. Let this cup pass from me, right. if possible. Not my will, but yours be done. And he went back and checked on his disciples. And I know you probably can't see, but in, in the, the four... Uh, side of that his disciples are laying there asleep mm-hmm. and he went back and checked on them and they were asleep and he asked them uh, could they not watch and pray then he went back and prayed again and an angel came and strengthened him and it, he prayed to the point that there were uh, sweat like drops of blood from him asking not my will but thine be done he went back and checked on his disciples and they were back asleep he went back and prayed the third time, and he came back. And when he came back, he said, it is time. And when the disciples woke up, they could hear the thundering. They could hear the thundering of, of many, many feet approaching them. And as they got up, there was a crowd. It, was a, a, it had soldiers. It had priests. It had uh, officials of the temple. Uh, and... Leading it all was Judas Iscariot, the one that had betrayed Jesus. And as they got there, uh, he walked up to Jesus and he told him, he said, I will be, I, I will, the man I kiss will be the one that it will be. And he, you, you hear it and you will continue to hear it as you hear the Bible studied that Jesus was betrayed with a kiss. So he had, uh, when he was uh, kissed, then they bound him. They grabbed Jesus and they bound him. And the disciples were completely confused. Peter was angry. And Peter, you know, Peter, Peter was kind of impulsive. So he yanks out his sword and he cuts off the ear of the high priest uh, servant, Malchus. And Jesus reached out. Now, now look, Jesus, they're, they're taking Jesus to be crucified. At this moment, Jesus knew. And he still, he reached out and he touched the ear of Malchus and healed it. Uh, right there on the spot. Mm-hmm. Then they 
they took Jesus and they led him away. And they led him, first of all, they led him, and this is only recorded in John, as if you want to look up these scriptures. Uh, I wish we had time to, to put them all up there where you could follow along with that. But John is the only one that records this. He went to Annas first, who is the father-in-law of Caiaphas. He, and when they got to that court, uh, they, there was nothing they could do because the false witnesses were just that. They were false, and they knew they were. But they went ahead and um, spit on him and slapped him and mocked him before they sent him on to the court of Caiaphas. When they got to the court of Caiaphas, uh, Caiaphas started to question him. And he asked him if he was the Christ, the Son of God, and as he said he was. And Jesus said that he was. He admitted that he was. He said, I am. And at that point, then Caiaphas just went what we call ballistic. Uh, he tore his robe and started screaming, blasphemy, blasphemy. You know, you're uh, blaspheming God. And mm -hmm. that is worthy of death. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, the Jews could not uh, kill anyone. Uh, they, they couldn't execute anyone. The Roman government had to do that. So he was going to have to be led to uh, a government official who was Pilate. But before that happened, while Jesus was standing there and they were mocking him, the, um, Peter had followed. He, he had recovered enough. He followed, and he was in the courtyard outside of where they were holding him in court and with the guards. And a servant girl came by, and she said, You're one of them. And he, he said, I am not. And he denied it. And later on, as, as they were sitting there by the fire, another girl came by and said, he is one of them. And it said that Peter brought down curses from heaven and loudly said he was not one of them. And later, another one came by and said, he has the, the Galilean speech. He's from Galilee. He is one of them. And again, he loudly denied that he was one of them. And at that time, Jesus turned and looked at him, and he got up and left the courtyard, and our Bible tells us he wept bitterly over uh, the denial of Jesus as his Savior. He Then uh, uh, the, the people there in Caius, Caius' court, I got tongue-tied, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they mocked him. They, would, uh, they put a blindfold on him. They uh, hit him in the face and said, who struck you? Mm -hmm. And they beat him. And then they led him on to the court of Pilate. Now, Pilate was the ruler. So they took him to before, before Pilate. And Pilate had been wanting to see Jesus anyway. And um, he was there. And his wife sent word to him and said, Pilate, I had a, a, a dream, and it's not good. Don't have anything to do with this man's sentence. And Pilate uh, didn't listen to her and anyway he, he had to go with the crowd but when he went before Pilate Pilate questioned him and he said are you king of the Jews and he said it is as you say and that was the only answer he gave Pilate and Pilate said don't you understand that I, I hold your life in my hands and Jesus stood there he just stood there so he turned to the crowd and he said I have nothing against this man. I'm going to turn him back over to you. And they screamed. They started screaming, crucify him, crucify him. He said, I can turn Barabbas, who was a murderer, loose, or I can turn this Jesus loose. And they said, Barabbas, 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 give us Barabbas and crucify him. So Jesus, he, took, he took Jesus and he had him flogged. And Brother Ron has told us, uh, uh, many times in his sermons when he's talking about uh, the death of Jesus and what he went through for us and suffered for us, uh, that they would tie their hands. And as you, if you can see that picture, you can see that he's tied where he can't move. And they used a whip that had, uh, it had metal, it had glass, mm -hmm. and they, they uh, usually uh, did 39 stripes minus one, uh, 40 stripes minus one, which was 39, and it just left their back uh, just cut down to the bone. And then they took Jesus, and uh, the, then the soldiers took him, and they took him, and, and he turned, then Pilate turned him over to be crucified. And they took Jesus, and they took him into the court, 
And um, they took him into the court and um, they put a, a robe. Our Bible, our Bible tells us that it was a scarlet robe. Other places it says it's a purple robe. And they put a robe on him and uh, they took a, a long, long thing of, sp of thorns, a strip of thorns, and they wound it around each other and they put it on his head for a crown. And then they took a, a staff and put it in his head, in his hand, and they, they beat him uh, on the head. It said our Bible told, they struck him on the head many, many times. And uh, they mocked him. And they said, King, King of the Jews. And they fell down in front of him. They spit on him and beat him. And not a word, not a word did our Jesus say. Now, this is where we're going to stop for today. Uh, then our next lesson will, will start right here, and we will talk about, it's, our, our prospect seems grim right now, doesn't it? But oh, for the hope, and the hope of Jesus Christ our Savior. It's a beautiful, beautiful love that he gives us, isn't it, kids? But you take that love and share it with others, all right? And we'll see you next lesson. All right, we're going to do a song. Easter means salvation. Salvation means we win. I don't think many of you kids have sang this, but it's got a great message in it, and it's a beautiful song, a beautiful story about Jesus Christ and what Easter means. Easter means salvation, 
Salvation means we win. Easter means salvation. Salvation means Jesus died for our sins. He rose again. We'll live forever with Him. Forever with Him. We'll live forever with Him. Easter means salvation. Happy Easter! Amen. Got four minutes left. We're good. We did it. Praise God. We're good, aren't we? As John said, Johnny yeah. says, "Praise God." You want to come back Thursday? I don't know. What are you gonna be doing? I'll be working, trying to.